This is Jeff Perlman, founder and CEO of Zojo. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to connect to a database. So I'm going to do this in a desktop project. And later on, I'll talk about how doing it in a web project is a little bit different and how mobile is very different. But let's start with the desktop. So chances are you want the database to be available anywhere in the application, which means storing the connection in a global location. Now, fortunately, we've got the app class, which is global. It's a great place to put anything global. So I'm going to create a property to store the connection. I'm just going to call it DB. And I'm going to use SQLite for this uh, example. Uh, but um, you could, of course, connect to any database. We have plugins for most of them. So I've created a place to store it. Now I need to actually make the connection. And in this case, I want the connection to start up as soon as the application does. So I'm going back to the app class again. And I'm going to add an event. Uh, called opening. The opening event is the very first thing that happens when your application starts. So it's a great place to initialize things. So I'm going to go to the uh, opening event of the app class and this is where I'm going to make the connection. So I'm going to set my property DB equal to a new SQLite database. That creates a new object. And because this is a SQLite database, it's using a local database file, I'm going to use the uh, database file in this example from the Eddie's Electronic Sample app we have. And you can see that in the example projects if you look through them. So I'm going to set the SQLite uh, database file property equal to that file. Now I've got it on the desktop. So I'm going to use special folder.desktop.child and I'm going to set it to eddies electronics.sqlite. Okay, so that should assign it. And then I just call connect. And that should be all I need to do. There we go, connect. Okay. So let's see if this works. I'm going to type in break and I'm going to press run and we should see it show up in the debugger if I've done everything properly. Okay, now I'm on a Mac so it's asking for permission to access the desktop. I'm going to click okay. Okay, so here we are on the debugger and there's the app class object. I'll click on app and you can see DB right here and you can see it's a SQLite database. That's a good sign. Let's click on that. And there's the database file property that I set. And you can see it's a folder item. So let's click on that. And sure enough, the display name is Eddie's Electronics and exists is true. So we did connect to the right database. Terrific. OK. So next, we want to deal with the possibility that something could go wrong. This code assumes that this is always going to point to the right location, this database file. Maybe I mistyped the name. Maybe it's not on the desktop. Maybe something goes wrong with the connection because the database is corrupted. Who knows? But you want to test for that. And so you do that with basic error checking. And in Zojo, that's using try catch. So I'm going to type try. And then I'm going to change this to catch error as database exception. So it's going to try this one line of code. I, this could be many lines. In this case, it's just one. And if something goes wrong and it's a database exception, then I can handle it here. Now, if there was a way to recover from this, this is where I'd put the code. But honestly, in this particular case, there isn't any way. So I'm just going to I'm just going to put in system.beep. So we make a beep sound. Message box. Something went wrong while connecting. And try. OK, so now we've handled the situation where something who knows what goes wrong. Now, in a desktop project, there's a default window that opens automatically. Now, you probably don't want your main window to open if you were unsuccessful making a database connection. So I'm going to click on the app class. I'm going to go over to the inspector here. I'm going to set the default window from window 1 to none. That way, when I go back to opening here, I can say, well, assuming that we made a connection to the database, then I can say var w as new window 1. OK, so if we make a connection to the database, it's going to go ahead and open the window. Let's give this a try. So press run. Again, it's going to ask this every time. This is just permissions on the Mac. You won't see this on Windows or Linux. I'll click OK, and there's my window. That means we connected. And so obviously here I might be showing you know, a place for to display some data from the database, allow the user to edit it, that sort of thing. OK, so that's basically how you make a database connection. Now, this is a desktop project. What if I want to do this in a web project? Well, in a web project, it's very slightly different. 
I'm going to switch over to a web project I have open. And the difference is instead of using the app class, because that would be global to the application, we want the connection to the database to be uh, just for the user, for the session. And that's where we have the session object here. So the only real difference is that I would create the property here under session. Oops, SQLite database, right? So I'm going to do it here instead of in the app class. And I would use the sessions event. It also has an opening event. And I would put my code here. But it would be the same code. I could literally go back here, copy this. Well, you can't use system.beep, but everything else would be the same. You know, um, So that's how it works with the web. Now with mobile, it's very, very different. Uh, and the reason is, is that a mobile device, in order to save the battery, is not going to let you maintain a constant connection to a server. If it sees that going on too long, it's eating up too much battery, and it's going to cut it off. So the way you uh, create a, a mobile application that talks to a database is very different. Typically, what you do is you have it talk to a, a web app that's in between, and the web app talks to the database. That way, you can have an asynchronous connection between the, um, between the mobile app and the database. And I'll do another video on that in the future so you can look for that. But, but that's, at this point, very, very different for a mobile app versus a web app or a, um, a desktop app. Now, in this example, I used a local SQLite database. How would it be different if you were using a um, server database such as Postgres? Well, the difference is, is this property would be uh, Postgres instead, Postgres database. And in the opening event, you'd, of course, connect to a, or you make a new object that's a Postgres database. And then you need to connect to it. And of course, you're not going to do that with the database file. Instead, you have a host property, and you'd set that to wherever your database is on the internet or in your local network. You'd set the username equal to a username. You'd probably have a dialog box or somewhere where you store the, the username because you have to authenticate. And of course, the password, same thing. You'd store that somewhere, have the user type it in. But really, that's about the difference between connecting to a local SQLite database versus connecting to a database that's on a server, um, a Postgres database, ODBC, Oracle, MySQL, etc. So what's next? Well, now that we have a connection, the next step is to be able to display data from the database. So what you want to do is watch the Querying a Database from Zojo video. There'll be a link to it in the description. To learn more about Zojo, click below to subscribe to this channel, check out the other videos, and visit Zojo.com.